Tennessee This Week from WATE 6 on your side starts now. Hello and welcome to Tennessee This Week. Good to be with you. I'm Don Hudson. A couple hundred people gathered last week in Knoxville to rally for LGBTQ rights. The rally was a show of support for the LGBTQ community and really a demonstration against some bills being passed in the state legislature, including one which organizers expect will force changes to the Knox Pride Fest and the Knoxville Pride Parade. The hour-long rally held at Crooch Park in downtown Knoxville featured a half dozen speakers and an estimated 250 supporters. They listened, applauded, and just showed their unity. And I've long been a supporter of gay rights. The message? Do more to fight laws being passed in Tennessee that they say could ban drag shows in public places. Knox Pride CEO John Camp says that law could impact the Pride Festival and Parade. We can't do what we've done the last 25 years. Uh, we're going to have to find new ways to work. We're going to work with the city, work with elected officials, and really figure out legally what we can and cannot do. But I know what we can't do is leave drag queens and trans people behind. We're not, we can't leave part of our community and have a celebration. Ironically, at the same time the rally was happening, the Tennessee Senate passed a bill that prohibits gender-affirming surgeries for children in the state. That is something Izzy and Jason Brown believe could be dangerous for teenagers. I have so many friends and I know so many people who this would affect horribly. And I, all of these hateful legislation and all of these awful bills will have a really, really negative impact and literally kill people. I've always been an advocate for human rights and this is no exception. And now back to John Camp, the Pride Knox CEO, tells me that he expects to make a decision about the fate of the Pride Festival and the parade in the next couple of weeks. All right, also out of Nashville this week, the state Senate passing a bill that would expand the educational savings account program, growing it from just Davison and Shelby counties, now allowing Hamilton County into that vote voucher program. It allows families to use public school funding, about $8,000 to pay for private education, keeping the ESA limited to just those two counties originally was the compromise that got the program through the General Assembly back in 2019. And now it goes to the House for debate. On the House side, Speaker Cameron Sexton came down hard on pro-life anti-abortion groups, saying that the organization tried to, in Sexton's words, intimidate lawmakers. Tennessee Right to Life representatives told lawmakers and organiza the organization would poorly score voting for a bill that would add some exceptions to abortion, like ectopic pregnancies to the near total abortion ban. Now, Sexton rebuked the tactic and talked about the fact that lawmakers already know they're being graded. He says bringing it up in committee was unnecessary. All right, we're going to talk to our panel of pundits about those issues straight ahead. You're watching Tennessee This Week on WAT6 on your side. Welcome back to Tennessee This Week. We're now joined by our political pundits, George Corda, political analyst, Courtney Piper, political contributor, and Craig Griffith, our health care analyst. Uh, several topics to get into. They're all almost all of them connected to what's going on down in Nashville in the state capitol and then some other things on the side. Let's start with abortion. The first step to maybe loosen uh, the abortion law has just gone through. I'm curious your take on what will end up going through and will the governor sign it or will we end up having the exact same abortion law that we have right now? We'll start with Courtney. What these exemptions do is make a horrible bill just a little less horrible. It's really impossible to list off in legislation everything that could go wrong with the pregnancy. And what this bill does is adds a couple of provisions in there. It still doesn't have any um, exceptions for rape or incest. And this entire discussion really neglects the fact that the vast majority of Tennesseans want to see abortion remain safe and legal and in the decision of the, the woman and her doctors and her families and not people in Nashville. George, Craig? Well, I think the I think the provision, as I read it, it re, re, would require the state to prove, to have evidence to prove and bring against the doctor. Um, it is, is the right thing to do. I don't think in our system that someone should have to prove they're innocent. The state needs to prove their guilt or have evidence to bring to demonstrate guilt. So I think that that's a good provision. As for the rest of it, well, here's here's my thoughts on this. That if Tennesseans really are overwhelmingly in favor 
of abortion on demand or however Courtney wants to describe it, then Democrats should be in the catbird seat with respect to upcoming elections. They should sweep them because of the antipathy toward the legislature, toward abortion, and trying to restrict the number of unborn babies that whose lives are ended. And so I think that uh, it, it'll come down to it, uh, both the court and a political issue, and we'll see who triumphs in the end. Greg? Well, it's still very tenuous, I think, in Nashville. In the committee meeting, you saw the Speaker Sexton actually have to come to the uh, committee room, which he's entitled to do under the under the rules of the uh, of the House. Uh, but he was apparently there to make sure that some anti uh, bill people who are pro uh, anti abortion uh, could not speak so fervently against changing anything. And so there's still a lot of uh, bad feeling going on. Uh, the anti abortion people pulled a endorsement of uh, Senator Briggs who introduced a similar bill in the Senate. So uh, while there may be some support in changing it, I think on the leadership level, I'm not so sure that they rank and file, they have the votes of the rank and file to change anything. Uh, I think that there's still a lot of pressure on them to keep it the way it is. Because they had the opportunity to vote on all these exemptions last year, and they chose not to include them in the bill. So I think that's the same thing that will happen this year. And you you addressed it. I was going to ask how how powerful is that group, that pro life group, and and them pointing fingers. I don't want to use the word threats because I don't really don't know what was said, but to basically say, hey, be careful, your endorsements on the table here. Do they? Have yeah, that? I mean, I, I mean, let, let's not let's not play pretend here. I mean, there there are plenty of people who are aggressively willing to make political uh, make people play, pay a political price for being against abortion. So th this is not a one-way street. It just happens yeah. to be that in Tennessee, if you were in California trying to push this this bill, there would be you you'd have to have protection. You'd have to have bodyguard. Tennessee is a red state. And so in this state, there's a there's a uh preference to protecting unborn kids as opposed to we're going to do. We're going to let whatever happens happens. We're going to just open the floodgates. So I, I, I don't. I get. I get concerned when I hear conversations about. Oh, these people are really aggressive. Well, they're aggressive on the other side too. Yeah. Well, nobody. The Speaker of the House never has had to step into a committee to ask people to settle down. And the thing that's interesting here is we're starting to witness the beginning of the implosion of the Republican Party. Like George said, Tennessee is a red state. The Tennessee pro-life group, the ones that came into the committee that prompted Speaker Sexton to go in there and tell everybody to take a chill pill, is aligned with Republicans. They make a lot of endorsements of Republicans. And for that group to come in and say, hey, we're going to start pulling endorsements if you guys move forward with some of these changes, you're starting to witness the, the beginning of the implosion of the Republican Party. No, it just means they won't be listened to as much in the future. Well, it's a single issue advocacy. So that's, you know, they they they're they're determined only on this one issue. So it, they'll they will pull their endorsement from anyone who they think fails them on this one issue. All right. Well, let's jump let's jump off that since we're not going to solve it here. We're just going to talk about it. Move on to school vouchers just so people know the background. It's 2019, I believe, the legislature passed a bill that allowed Davis and Shelby County to take about $8,000 in public money and allow students to use it for private school. My understanding is less than 650 students have actually been approved to actually do this. I think like 1,200 applied, but 650. Now they're going to include Hamilton County to do the same. So is this going to be where it start, where it ends, or will this eventually spread across the state? Or will we have some family say, hey, you're letting these guys do it. My kid is over here in Anderson County, and we don't want, we don't have a great school here. And then you get a lawsuit. Where is it? Where is this headed? This this type well, of situation. I hope it spreads vouchers. across the state. I hope it spreads across the state. I, I was looking again today. I've done this, as I've done in the past. I'm looking today at some uh, national assessment of educational progress figure from 2019. Now this is a division of the United States Department of Education. And the NAEP, which is called the National Report Card, showed that in 2019, 
35% of Tennessee fourth graders were reading at fourth grade level, were proficient. 65% were not. And this was not markedly different from 29 other states. We are every year churning out hundreds of thousands of kids from high school who are functionally incapable of getting a job in the 21st century. And so for people who don't have the means to send their children to a school that isn't failing, and this isn't a wrap on teachers, this is a wrap on, on government and schools because it's failing. It's failing all over the country. There was a report the other day in Baltimore which has been under democratic control since 1967, by the way, 23 schools, not one student scored above zero in math. So you can understand why parents would be anxious to give some option to their children other than what they're in going through now. Well, I'm not sure that the way to fix the American education system is to hand out 600 vouchers. I'm not sure that that, that is percentage wise, a very good use of taxpayer monies. Is there a problem with education? Absolutely. And I think you're seeing some things that are going on like in Knox County, where they're establishing different academies at high school is a step in the right direction. It's a new vision. It's not just take your money, go to a private school and hope things are okay. So, uh, which only helps a very small percentage of, of our student population. I think you need bold moves like the academy uh, plan that our new school superintendent here in Knox County is is coming up with to help large numbers of children, not just a small number. Will it go across the state? Who knows? Um, it it was passed originally. It would only pass the legislature because they limited it to Davidson and Shelby County. Uh, now they're opening up probably to Hamilton County. But there are still people that were vastly opposed to the way this was implemented. So uh, I'm not sure that it gets expanded much past these three counties in the future. And, and Courtney, I want to let you speak on this, but just so everyone knows, 650 have taken advantage of it. It has a cap at 5,000 right now. So, so just in case people want to know if every single student could do it, they can't. Anyway, Courtney. This is the most irresponsible use of public funds, and all it does is gut public education. If we want to fix education, we need to invest in the system, not take money away from it. So what happens when you get a voucher is money gets taken out of the public school budget, and it follows a student to a private school. And those schools still have infrastructure needs. They still have classrooms that need to be clean. They still have technology needs. They still need teachers. They need teaching assistants. They need special education services. And when we take money out of the public education system, we're going to continue to gut it even more and not fix it. So if we're really concerned about public education, if we want to make sure our children can read and they are prepared for the workforce, we need to make investments in it, not take money out of it. Uh, one thing that I think is worth mentioning here is that national assessment of educational progress I mentioned, Tennessee and most other states are not statistically demonstrably different from 25 years ago. That is, children 25 years ago were in around the 30% level as they are now. And we can, we can say, oh, we can talk about all kinds of theoretical possibilities. But what we know is that people who have money can send their kids to public private schools and people who don't have money can't. And what this would do is create an environment in which parents could say, all right, I'm gonna take advantage of the opportunity that those people have for my kids. So George, how is a child in Gibbs gonna to get to web school? Well, I don't know, Courtney. That's because, about an hour drive away. Well, you know what? When, when kids from Gibbs, when they get the opportunity to go to web school, I guarantee you, there are gonna be ways found to get them there. I don't know about that. I, I think the core of our neighborhoods are neighborhood schools. And exactly. And don't do everything we can to make neighborhood schools as good as they possibly can be. And, you know, I'm not so sure that people from Gibbs want to leave Gibbs. Yeah. So, then they shouldn't. Yeah. Nobody's forcing them. 
No, I'm not sure. Like I said, I think they would rather have their public school improved than have to drive to wherever mm -hmm. it is. They'll have well, to I've, to. I've, as I pointed out, nothing is statistically or substantially different over the last 25 years. You want to wait 25 more years? Uh, that's too long. We are then. We let's a, start making some changes to the public education system, not taking money kids. out of it. Yeah. We got generations of undereducated right. kids who aren't learning. So you've got to do something and quit arguing about it. If this proves to be something that's positive, then that's a good thing for kids. Okay, so there's also no statistical evidence or data to show that students that use vouchers outperform kids that are educated in the public school system. I think system. that's a good thing for us to check on and come right. back and talk and about that, next week. We should. That, that, is, that, is, that is something that we don't have the data on that just yet. We're going to take a break, get to at least one more topic if we can. When we come back, you're watching Tennessee This Week. Welcome back. We're talking about another bill that is going through the legislature right now, Senate Bill 3, Adult-Oriented Performances. It basically covers topless dancing, strippers, male, female impersonators, cannot perform on public property, cannot perform where children can see it. Otherwise, they'll get a misdemeanor, do it again, it turns into a felony. Knox Pride rally last week against this. I was actually down there and talked to the CEO, John Camp, and he said this will impact the uh, Pride Festival and the Pride Parade, but he has not made a decision. He said that decision will be coming soon in a few weeks. So this is clearly an issue for, for being passed because people have concerns. It's clearly an issue for people looking at it saying, hey, what can we do and what can't we do that won't get us in trouble? So where do we want to start here? Does anyone want to raise their hand and jump in of where this is headed? Is well, I have a ACL question. Yes. I have a question. Based on the description you gave, who is advocating that children be able to go to those things? Well, I, okay, well, well first of all, if you're I mean, saying you, everybody... they can't go, who is arguing? Well, just, no, just real quickly to clarify, to it's not club. it's not about going. It's be, if it actually happens on public property or in front of where kids are. Well, who is saying kids ought to be able to see yeah. topless uh, performers? Kids ought to be able to see people performing and. Uh, simulating sex acts and such in public. Who's, okay. who's arguing? First, first that's, all, and that's a good question. What is the need for the bill? Wait, wait, there has actually been to a drag show in person. Raise your hand. Watching well, RuPaul's Drag Race on TV doesn't That's count. irrelevant it, to my question, Courtney. It is not irrelevant. You've never been to a drag show. You don't know what happens. I've never been to a strip club, but I don't want children going to a strip club. Never and then been can. to a drag show, you don't know what happens. Look, we can talk about the constitutionality, the legalities of this all you want, but what this does, what state government is trying to do is send a message to members of the LGBTQ community that they're not welcome in Tennessee. Wait, wait, are you arguing that children ought to be able to see these shows? George, is that your, have is you that ever your been to a drag show? No, that, that's not my question. Are you are you answer the question? If you've never been to one, how do you know that you wouldn't want you your have child if they one. identified as a member of the LGBTQ uh, Courtney, community please, to go? To figure out what your what your standard here is. Are you saying children should be able to go to these shows? I'm saying yes no? these shows should be able to happen. Well, obviously, the show can happen. This bill yeah. deals with who can be in the audience. You know, and exactly. also, if we want to, so okay, let's talk about who can be in the audience. Who can be at the audience at a rated R movie? Legally, anybody, any, yes, anybody under the age of eighteen that has a guardian with them can go to a rated R movie. Drag shows start in the evening, most likely. And if you are a parent and you have a child, I don't understand how your child is going to go to that drag show unless the parent goes with them. So if you want parents making decisions about what their children see and don't no, see, no, 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 hold on, you don't mean that. that. Well, let me you jump don't in mean here. that. Well, let's, you don't let's, mean that. Let, let me jump there, in here. There are any number of things in which you would argue parents should not be able to make those decisions for kids. So that's not. Let, well, let's, then where's the outrage with rated R movies? 
the outrage with rated R movies that this well, is about obscenity. Can't, can't it's not go. about obscenities. It's about telling members of the LGBTQ community that they are not welcome in Tennessee. No, that's if this not was about important. obscenities, still, we'd have the same have outrage not, over rated R movies. You are still avoiding my question. Are you arguing that children should be able to go to these shows? That's not what this issue is about, George. It's about gay member, LGBTQ members of the community and telling them that they are not welcome. Hey, Don, here. is this bill not about children obscenity. not going, well, not being it, it, performed it, in it, front of children? It covers a lot of things. What I want to ask is something like the Pride Festival, something like the Pride Parade, could that not happen? And, and should that be should that be? No, what it's, this on it's on public property. It's and on public property, and children property. walk in public property. It's also a legal question as to whether a parade right. is a performance or not. But Hang again, this is not about protecting children from obscenities. This is about telling members of the LGBTQ community that they are not welcome in Tennessee. Okay. And you will not answer my question okay. because you don't want to go on record saying, yes, you think kids oh, should be able God's to go to these shows. Oh, for God's sakes, show. George. Well, well, jumping well, I'll get back to my original question. Yes. Where, where are children allowed to see these in Tennessee? What is, what is the need for the bill? Well, all ages drag shows. That that's the issue. Mm -hmm. You have never been to a drag show. You don't know what happens. Let's let's put it this way, and I'll get your opinion. And we'll wrap, wrap it up on this part of this. Uh, our legal analyst Greg Isaacs doesn't think it'll you know stand when it gets the lawsuit comes. ACLU has promised a lawsuit and says I I don't know if it's true. Has says that it has defeated every one of these in every other state. In the end, even if this goes all the way through, one, does the governor sign it? And two, does does it get shot down through legal means? Well, the governor yeah, will yeah, absolutely yeah. sign it. Yeah, the governor's going to no sign it. No question about that. Once, once a law becomes a law, it's a law until it's overturned. Right. And what mm -hmm. I think, I think the same thing I said about education earlier. If this, is a, if this is a mountain on which to die, then politicians, presumably mostly Democrats, should run on this run on this issue and say this is discriminatory it's wrong and if you elect me i will eliminate any possibility of this kind of regulation of drag shows they ought to make it a campaign thing and let's yeah see. freedom of let's speech see. should be a campaign thing absolutely let, yeah every democrat should come out for it and you ought to ask every democrat who comes on this show where do you stand on this Again, the question is, will it pass? Will a, a lawsuit, ch one, challenge it, and two, defeat it? Well, we don't we, we don't even play lawyers on TV, so right. heaven only knows. It's a 50-50 <laughs> chance on, you know, whether it would uh, uh, pass or fail, uh, which would be a long, drawn-out drawn out process. So, uh, you know, I it's it's an, it's almost, to me, is a, a bill looking for an issue to come up with. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I can you know, tell you, it's, it's one of the one of the social, you know, uh, cultural warriors that people are trying to, because I can't tell you I've seen anywhere where children are going to burlesque shows that have been around since the 1930s. And I've been to I don't even know how many drag shows just in Knoxville. I've never once saw a minor in one of those drag shows. Well, here's the problem. Here's here's why this is occurring around the country. There are all ages drag shows being held. And there have been documented videos. George, you've videos, never been to one. You don't know what videos, happens. Documented video evidence of performers uh, simulating sex acts, speaking in, in the crudest possible way, and of children being called up on stage to participate. There's video. George, of this. you've never. Okay, but you what, have never been. That, I can those, doctor those, video. Those, I'm not we, talking we about We can all agree, right. That's we can all agree that those. I've never been right. to one. Prompting and those same concern. things happen in rated R movies also. That is prompting the concern. And you won't even answer the question whether or not you think children. George, you're talking about happen. something you don't know anything about and you've never well, You gonna, won't even say whether you, well, you've been there. Should children be okay. able to attend? I've never seen a child at a drag show. Should they be able to Children attend? Children rated our movies. Okay. We are yeah, not. Well, well, uh, what about parental rights? Yeah. There's, what again, there's all, kinds of, there's all kinds of well, questions here. And there are some questions that aren't going to get answered at this particular if time. If adults want to do this on their own, that's their business. Right. But we, we're, we're running out of time, so we're going to have to wrap it up. We want to thank George. We want to thank Courtney. And we want to thank Craig for joining us. We want to thank you for watching Tennessee This Week.
views of guests on Tennessee This Week are their own and do not represent the views of WATE6 on your side or Next Star Broadcasting.